All right. Um, yes, yeah, so as, as Oliver mentioned, uh, I'm Ian Dwonker, co-founder and CEO of SVX Robotics. And we focus on building synthetic data uh, to, to achieve uh, vision capabilities in robots. So the first thing is, why are we excited about robot vision in general? And you know, I think we view that as sort of a critical capability for robots, um, you know, kind of in, in the 21st century. And the truth is there's just a lot of very dynamic and uh, very complicated tasks that are showing up um, in industry. And it's the case that pre-programmed robots can't really properly adapt uh, and, and achieve success in those tasks. And so some examples of these types of robots, you have um, arms maybe sorting through e-commerce items or you know, inspection robots in uh, warehouse storage facilities reasoning about inventory and kind of the complex packaging that uh, shows up in these settings. And so it's important for these robots to be able to, you know, have perception capabilities and adapt to those environments uh, as, as they're running. So what sort of vision um, capabilities are, are these systems seeking or, or, or what is capable today? And, uh, you know, one of the important tasks that shows up in, in a lot of uh, robotic vision applications is instant segmentation. So reasoning about objects in an image and uh, understanding the visible sections of those of those objects. And the reason that's important is robots need to use this info to, you know, maybe inspect an item, uh, count how many there are in a scene, uh, generally reason about um, the where and, and frequency of, of, of particular objects in a scene. And it's very exciting right now because, uh, you know, in the last five years or so, we have some very powerful techniques uh, from, from deep learning and computer vision research that work quite well in these tasks. Um, one model in particular that uh, is pretty commonly adopted in many of these scenarios is this mask RCNN um, model that uh, is, is a deep learning model, but has really strong performance on a lot of object um, segmentation tasks and scenarios. Another, um, another task that shows up with some frequency um, in robotics is reasoning more specifically about the spatial, the relative position and orientation uh, of particular objects. And so this is important because for a robot to manipulate those items, um, they have to be able to reason about where that item is relative to its own sensors, its own frame of reference, um, to maybe be able to pick it up or move it. Um, and so here again, uh, some, some deep learning approaches uh, are starting to show a lot of promise uh, and work quite well. Um, in particular, one approach that um, you know, has, has been adopted in some applications has been reasoning about object key points using a deep learning model um, and then solving kind of a known correspondence between key points on, on known objects and where those uh, key points are on the 3D uh, model of that object. And so the, the great news is uh, these, deep, these deep learning approaches uh, work quite well, uh, but the issue is there's a lot of data requirements, heavy data requirements um, to get these uh, models to really perform well in practice and in the applications we need them to work well in. And you know, some of the pain points with um, you know, collecting that data is it does take some time, you know, so you have to actually have the hardware resources, um, you know, paying uh, people to run uh, SKUs and items through a system. Um, it may just take a long time to collect, you know, the tens, the hundreds of thousands of example cases uh, that you need to, to build one of these um, deep learning models uh, successfully. The other point that's uh, you know, quite, a, quite a painful thing with this uh, technique is uh, it costs a lot of money to annotate the data. So typically it's not just collecting the images, but you also have to pay someone to um, very carefully uh, and with a lot of detail tell you the boundaries or, or whatever information you're trying to extract from, from the images. Uh, and it's, it's quite costly and slow as well. And the other issue is that when you ask people to do these sorts of annotations, um, they, they can make mistakes. So 
um, that, that example image on the right there, you can see kind of the, the heavily detailed scenes that uh, you know, these industrial robots are trying to reason about and asking people to sort of very, very carefully define the boundaries of these things um, you know, becomes, becomes difficult at scale. So you know, part of what SBX is very excited about is uh, the promise of training with synthetic data because we believe it's faster, uh, cheaper, and more robust uh, to build these deep learning models and uh, ultimately solve the vision task uh, that you need for, for your robot application. So, um, how does how does the SBX uh, system work? We we really see kind of our core you know uh, offering as kind of a data multiplier. So we think um, you know it's 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 a pretty simple flow to ask um, a robot developer to collect a few images of their task at hand. Um, you know just just a few dozen. And then SBX basically creates a synthetic environment uh, that can render tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of image variations um, with annotations already uh, that can be used to, to build a successful deep learning model. And uh, we don't just create any data, we also measure the quality of that synthetic data by training our own models internally and reasoning about how well they transfer on real images. So a little more detail around kind of that first step. Um, again, we ask uh, robot developers to share a few images that uh, describe their scene. So in this case, we have a robot um, reasoning about uh, some, some blue bins on, on a shelf, um, ask them to share a bit of information about the sensors they're using and the, perhaps the physical specs of the items of interest that they care about. And then SBX task is to essentially source assets, 3D assets that uh, represent that problem and also create generators on demand um, that reflect kind of the, the spatial positioning and the relative positioning of those items in the scene. So you've got on the right hand side, a uh, synthetic image that was produced by um, the SBX uh, generator software uh, with you know, similar looking bins and, and orientations. And then the second part of, of the step, uh, which is really critical to kind of ensuring high quality synthetic data is benchmarking it. So um, as part of the SBX um, you know, delivery process, we, we run lots of variations of synthetic data, varying things like lighting, textures of the items, backgrounds, orientations, all of this important um, aspects of, of how ultimately the, the images and the computer vision data looks, um, we sort of aggressively explore that space. And so on the left there, you have an image um, of, of, a, of one such study that we do on every, on every project where um, those lines all represent the performance of a model trained on synthetic data and evaluated on um, real, real images. And uh, the higher, the better there. And uh, so that actually ends up being a decent amount of compute and, and GPU resources to sort of complete that entire cycle. Uh, but at the end of the day, you, you end up with um, a synthetic data set that you have high confidence uh, generalizes to the, the task at hand. And so on the right there, we have a uh, inference shot from one of our benchmarked internal models, uh, which is actually just an open source software um, uh, object detection model uh, running on a real image and uh, and doing quite well detecting those uh, those bins uh, after only being trained on on synthetic examples. So, what does the uh, you know data set format look like for SBX? Uh, we use a, a, a lightly modified version of a, of a standard format uh, called Coco which stands for Common Objects in Context. Um, that's a format that's been used in several um, image uh, computer vision contests and, and research. Um, it's very easy to use um, and, and, and reason about uh, data format. And this, uh, these images give you examples of, of the sort of data that uh, SPX generators produce. So this is a, a forklift detection uh, generator and you have a, a color frame on the left, which kind of is meant to reflect the, the image sensor the robot's using. Um, the middle frame represents you know, all the red centered annotations uh, that we provide, so masks, um, bounding boxes, orientations of the item, so forth. 
And on the right, we also offer um, depth information about uh, every pixel in the scene, uh, which is important to reason about in some applications as well. So the benefit here is that, you know, of course, um, the, the generator uh, that we develop can create millions of these image variations um, quite quickly. And uh, the benefit then of having a data set that's highly diverse is um, you're, you're more likely going to be able to build a computer vision model that, uh, that is robust to you know, kind of the visual uh, variations that, uh, that show up in the production system and, and the robot's uh, you know, task at hand. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's at a high level you know, what, uh, what we've done, what we offer kind of as a, as a service, as a company. Um, I, you know, the high level takeaway from the benefits of, of synthetic data is that it really is a, a faster, uh, cheaper way to, to bootstrap or improve a, a deep learning uh, vision model. Um, you know, one of the truths of, of building a computer vision um, model in any application is, you know, you've, you've got sort of a, a continually evolving understanding of what items are, are present in some of these complex tasks. Maybe you're deploying a robot to new scenes over time. And the benefit of using synthetic data here is that you know, instead of having then to re-wait before you collect all this data and have it annotated, um, you can sort of get a few examples and, and quickly update your data to, um, to those new applications. And in general, yeah, the, the, real, the real complexity in, in getting synthetic data that works well is having really great technical art and then having enough compute to sort of run those experiments through and reason about that generalization. And, uh, and that's sort of what we um, that what we do at SPX. So, yeah, if um, you know, obviously, if anyone is building computer vision projects, um, very happy to chat about it. So, uh, even at a hobbyist level, um, we do have a free tutorial that um, we released last month that uh, gives you sort of an example of what synthetic data looks like, um, how to train on it um, using a mask or stand model that, uh, again, as I mentioned, is, is an open source uh, model from uh, PyTorch and Torch Vision. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're we're really excited about the you know the future of synthetic data. Ultimately, um, computer vision running on on more robots for these interesting tasks.